What's going on, bass heads? This is Tyler with GPCarAudio.com here, and welcome to part one of the GPCarAudio.com real world in car electrical testing. Let's start this off by showing you everything that's going on here. In this vehicle, we have a standard bare minimum wiring setup. The cable used is the GP Ultra Pure OFHC Copper 2 Watt and has a rating of 400 amps at a 25 foot length. We have installed a standard Big 3 upgrade, a single power run from underhood battery to secondary battery in the rear, a single rear chassis ground, and in place of your amplifier location, we have an auto meter SB4 load tester. The electrical components consist of a 370 amp alternator, a North Star AGM65 under the hood, and a small single battery in the rear we will call the mystery battery until the end of the video. This mystery battery has a footprint of 3.75 inches by 8 inches and is extremely tiny. I have set the throttle on this vehicle so that under a heavy amperage load we drop down to idle RPM levels. You will hear the engine speed dropping during the testing. This alternator has an idle output of around 180 amps in this vehicle and as stated, this being part one, we will have an enhanced follow-up video with somebody maintaining 2000 RPM so we can achieve full alternator output during the same series of tests. On our first test here, we will see what we can sustain at 12 volts. We will run two tests to see what our continuous amperage power output capabilities are at the 12 volt area. As noted, this is an extremely tiny battery serving as the rear bank here, so in the 12 volt area we are sustaining a continuous 325 to 375 amps. So we can safely say a continuous 350 amp draw will be no problem for this setup in a musical condition at idle RPM speeds. And remember, we are only utilizing about half of this alternator's power output capabilities in this part one series of testing. On the next tests here, still dropping to idle output RPM under the loads, we will drop down to 11 volts and show more of a competition slash what the vehicle could sustain short term on a burp. Again, we are at idle RPM speeds which is assisting us with at most about 180 amps of current.
So down at 11 volts we are sustaining a continuous 500 to 520 amp draw. With such low amp hour serving as the rear bank, you can see after the second pull it's taking a bit longer to rebound the voltage up as we are quickly depleting this small, single Northstar SMS AGM80, which is the only battery serving as the rear bank. The additional wires seen on the GP24 terminals are two power and two grounds going to dual inputs on a SoundCube 2200 amplifier. Now for fun. Let's see what we can sustain at 10 volts. I'd never recommend running a system this low, but it's always nice to have that peace of mind knowing what you can potentially support. And we have a solid 740 amps. My load tester was getting really hot as this was shot immediately after the first two series of tests, but you get the idea. Now let's get to what's going to happen in part two. In our part two video, we will be adding a second power run from front to back and a second rear chassis ground. Remember, our 2 aught gauge is rated at 400 amps at 25 feet. The run in this vehicle is approximately 20 feet, and under a huge amperage load in a single run of wire, you will have a natural voltage loss from resistance from one end to the other. Adding this second power run in will allow us to deliver even more power effortlessly from under the hood and allow for even larger amperage draws while maintaining higher voltage levels. We will also be showing full amperage output capabilities of this setup utilizing the alternator's full output potential at 2000 RPMs and not only idle output. So thank you for tuning in guys and stay tuned for part two.